smoke. Man, it's your boy, artist. Air the gap too deep. Are you Milan? Here, girl, Flamey G. But it's Auntie Pig. Ebony, aka Ebony, with an I. I'm from the Big Head Radio Show, and I'm with the King Teeth Network, huh? All right, man. Tell the people who you are when they can find you. Yo, it's Millie the Rockstar here. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at M I L L underscore T H E underscore Rockstar. That's on Instagram, that's on Twitter. Um, it's going to be on everything else uh, as well. So where's the rock star? Um, I've basically always been like a rock star type, for real, honestly. But I never really pursued it like I wanted to. So I just decided, like, why not, you know? Basically. Now, when was this? Uh, this was actually recently. See, as I've been finding myself and stuff like that, like throughout the years and all the years of meditating and doing all of that, and it's like the more you find out about yourself and the more you go and dig into yourself and get rid of things, you just start not to care anymore. You start to realize that people's opinions is just that, an opinion. And then it's like you kind of just grow after that. You grow and glow for real. Yeah. And it's like when you're not trying to suppress yourself from being who you really are, that's when you really start to glow up and shine, for real. And I had to learn that. It took a while, but, you know, when you're at that fuck it point, and you're, 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 it's, it's over with. <laughs> no, you, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. So you got to a point of fuck it. Wow. Where is that? How did that begin? Like, what made that come about? Um... Basically, like I said, just learning about myself. Uh, if you do that, you, you can't care about what other people say. You won't care about what no one else says to you or anything like that. So once you get to that fuck it part, it's just there and boom. I'm, there's no way to explain it for real. It's just a thing that you have to experience. It's kind of like when you ask a question and you don't know the answer to it, mm -hmm. That's because sometimes you could be living the answer and you have to wait till it's over with the experience and you will get your answer at the end of the experience. But you have to live the experience. You have to live the experience. Then you would be like, oh, I know what he's talking about when he said the fuck it moment type mm -hmm. thing. So, yeah, it's one of those type of things. Now, you have an awakening spirit to you. Where did that kind of... It's honestly always been there, but like I said, um, I will suppress myself. Yep. Okay. Say what? Oh, oh, you're so funny. <laughs> uh, we was about to get deep. I like it. I, I like it when you was going. So. Okay. <coughs> now, awakening spirit. Um, is it something you develop into? Um, it's actually something that's always been there, but like I said, that suppression thing, like I, su I would suppress my th myself and suppress my spirit because I was brought up, I was brought up, excuse me, um, on strong religion, like it's this and that's it, you know, but I was always wondering like it's got to be more, it's, it's got to be something, like we're not here to just say this is it and that's it, like it's 
you know, so I was always taught that certain things were evil and stuff. So I studied meditation for like three years before I even started doing it because I was afraid mm -hmm. of the unknown, basically. Mm -hmm. When I got into it, I say, damn, this shit is crazy. It's really helping me for real. Like, it really helped me. It made me feel more relaxed. It made me feel more calm. And the more I got to do it, like, I noticed even my voice would get better and stuff. Like, everything in my body would start changing. My posture, everything about me would just change from the inside out. And then next thing you know, people were like, John, you changed and I can see it. Like, mm. you can see it. So, yeah, it's deep for real. Uh, I can talk about this all day. <laughs> well, I, I think that's, you know what's crazy? Um, I've been doing this for about two years, right? And mm -hmm. I'm still figuring out what my platform really can do. Mm -hmm. But I really believe it, it is what you're speaking right now. It is the path to who you become mm -hmm. um, and the trials and tribulations that you had to do to get there. Exactly. So we're kind of here for that. So if you want to go in depth more into um, the awakening time, mm -hmm. like I really fuck with that. Because it's like, you got to have those moments in your life where it's like, a light bulb. Like yeah. It finally, you finally kind of get it. Yeah, because when, when that light bulb go off, it it really goes off. And mm. when you when 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 you see a word, when you see the world in a different perspective, it really turns something on in your brain, and you really see things differently. Like you can start see. It's like you can even see people, uh, like energies yeah. and. The, but it's not like you can physically see it, but you can see it. It's hard to explain. No, exactly. Yeah, but um, and like when you start um, admitting things to yourself and, and, and saying like, you know, getting rid of the liar in yourself mm -hmm. and uh, the, decept the, uh, the deceitful person in yourself, you dig into all of that, even your old skeletons, all that, you'll start to see it on others. You'll be like, oh, that's what I used to do when I was deceiving people, mm -hmm. or this is what, like, you can see everything so clear, and it's like you can even see it in their face, or their whole aura, everything. Mm -hmm. You can see what they're about. That's why I don't hang around a lot of people, because I try to stay pure as possible. I know I'm only human, of course, but I know I'm more than that as well. So, I, every, of course, everyone is, you know, but everything has to, fo you have to focus on you, you know. I had to learn that as well. I used to always put everyone before myself. Yeah. And, I, you know, just to make everyone feel good and stuff like that, that's bad for you as well. Absolutely. You know, that'll take a toll. You have to tell people no sometimes. You have to put yourself first. You know, that plays a big part in meditation as well because whatever you do on the, whatever you do on the outside is reflecting on how you are on the inside. Just like jealousy, like even little jokes and stuff, you know, people may not, you know, they may not say it and stuff like that, and they may not, they, they may not, they may like you still, you know, but that don't mean they're not jealous or envious of you. Subconsciously is, is there. Exactly, it came in a joke. So, yeah, it's, it, it's a lot, man. It's a whole lot, and that we have to learn, that I had to learn to take stuff. I've, I've been meditating and studying the body as well for about, it's been about, about 12, 12, 13 years now. Wow. Yeah, I could probably help with surgery at this time. Yeah. <laughs> but really knowing yourself and knowing your body is a different feeling. Yeah. You know why you're sick, or you know what exactly. you did that was exactly. out of your routine and why your stomach, you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. You start to really realize your body is a system. Mm -hmm. So, man, that's, that's dope that you have allowed yourself to, you know, because it takes years to learn. Yeah, it definitely and does. Experiment and, so can you kind of give some examples of like when you started to get it, when it came to you and, 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 and who you were? Yeah, um, I could say for the most part, I, I understand a bit of myself, but I'll never really know myself before I leave Earth because I'm always going to be finding myself. I'm always going to elevate. I'm never looking to be the same. Even with this music and this rock stuff that I'm doing now, I'm going to be the greatest at it. I'm not going to just do it for, I'm, I practice every day or I skip a day or two if my body 
you know, because I do work out and stuff like that too. To, I try to have a balance with everything that I do. So, but yeah, basically, um, I'm going to be on this journey of finding myself. And that's one of the one of the reasons and one of the things that keeps me going every day is I know I'm gonna get better because I want to be perfect. But the thing is, I know I'll never be there or become perfect. So. How good could I actually become if I could never become perfect? You, you feel me? Right. So You're that's always chasing, something. always chasing something. So that's how I see it. I love it. So how did your journey and fully focus kind of combine, collab, mm -hmm. and create with Tony Shepard? Um, with that, honestly, because um, I used to record his son, um, Vaughn. And we were real close. He was like my little brother and stuff. And we had a lot of personal conversations. He used to come to me for a lot of stuff. And we just used to talk, Millie, what should I do about this? And boom, boom, boom. You know, so we was, he was really thugging <laughs> with me for real. But um, he was like, Millie, you know what? He was like, um, he was like, I swear, he was like, I, he was like, I swear on everything. When I, when I make it, you're coming with me. I'm, ta I'm bringing you with me. And uh, I never forgot that, but uh, I haven't talked to him in like a couple of months before the situation had got happened. The first time he got shot, then me and him had a conversation. And then the next thing you know, I heard, heard he had, you know, yeah. yeah. But um, got, got, it, got into it, uh, my bro Jug, um, he, he, uh, John had got in touch with him and they started talking. And then comes to find out that the guy that owns Fully Focus uh, Records, the CEO, was Vaughn's dad. Wow. And then I'm like, hold on, because I had when I had went over and I seen him, I'm like, I'm like, oh, this, I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, this is the dude that I was talking to the one time when, because he had came to drop some money off of the Vaughn <laughs> session or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, this is. I'm like, oh like, man, what's up? I'm like, how you been? Like, well, I didn't know that that was your son and stuff. Then from there we just chopped it up and stuff, and then um, we were just going on and boom, boom, boom. And then he liked the way I rapped and stuff like that. But then he seen my one video related thoughts, and then he was like, hold on, wait, wait a minute. He was like, play that back. He was like, that's some rock star shit right there. He was like, oh you. You a rock star for real. You were, and he just kept telling me that, like you a rock star. It's been a year now. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he just kept telling me that, and kept telling me. Then you know, he just said some encouraging words to me and stuff like that as well. That just helped me break out even more. And I was like, man, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> and, yeah. I love it. So you just celebrated um, the Blue Blonde Day um, a couple of days ago, actually. <laughs> How, how did it, what did it mean to you to perform um, and to just have that moment? Because uh, y'all were so close. It actually feel good to me. Um, every time that I perform, uh, I think about him because uh, he said that he was gonna bring me with him and he still did. Mm -hmm. So it, every time I perform I, and, and, and things are going and going, I, I think about him like, damn, he did say he was going to bring me, bring him, bring me with him. He, he did, and he did it, you know, so I, I'll always appreciate that in those words. Um, what I have out now, or what I'm going to have coming out, um, is this record uh, called Fuck em. Pretty sure everyone is pretty familiar with that one. The video <laughs> is uh, done as well. It'll be dropping soon. And then I have other projects in, that are singles. Um, I'm going to be doing um, Auntie's House, Ooh, depending on wow. what time, in a couple of days, depending on what time he get this out, like yeah, he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> might be out now. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and I'm going to be um, doing Sinking there, the one that I did at the, uh, club at the, uh, at the Avant uh, um, celebration. Um, it's called Sinking. Okay. And then the other one, I'm going to be shooting a video to June 3rd, this Saturday, uh, at 5 o'clock p.m. to 8 p.m. That one is called Invade. So I got a lot of stuff going on and a lot of projects. The reason why it's taking me so long to gather them together is because there's so many of them. Yeah. So. 
but it, I'm focused on those two. Yeah, I'm focused on those two for now. So y'all gonna be seeing a lot more of me and hearing a lot more from me though. So. Yeah. Um, what are some other collaborations you have coming, uh, worked on that are out that you want to do? Okay, I have I have a few collaborations coming out. I'm going to be doing something with some uh, some some more with Poochie Trap, um, P2 True, of course. Uh, um, with Liz, yeah, shout her out. She did her thing at at the um, at the event as well. I'm going to be doing some um, things with Rose as, as well, Rose shout Camp. Camp. Shout out Rose Camp, he a real one for sure. Um, yeah, I got a lot of things that's going to be coming out and going on. I, my schedule is literally, you can ask my best friend, like every time she, what do you do? She always tell me, I need an assistant. <laughs> I'm starting to believe I do at this point. <laughs> How do you feel like your music or what you bring will impact and change the culture? Because to be number one, you got to be changing the culture. So how do you feel like you're, you're going to change the culture? I feel like I'm going to change the culture because I'm going to let everyone know that first, everything that's in my music, it, uh, they are real stories. I, I don't lie about anything or say nothing I don't know about. Or if I don't know nothing about it, then I just don't say nothing about it. I just listen. But I feel like it's going to make people be who they want to be more. Um, but I'm not really focused on my music. To me, this music is just a stepping stone. I want to just be able to do music just for fun. I want to be making money other places. What I really want to do is talk to people and teach people let, and, and, and um, teach them the things that I've been learning throughout the years, you know. Give us a little lesson, a little taster. You know, such as things like um, how every muscle in your body um, can help you sing better if you know how to control it. Wow. You have to know um, how certain ways you stand. There are certain breathing techniques to make you hit notes better, higher, and easier. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it's a lot. Uh, that's why I say I will want, I will have to be able to sit down and actually start from somewhere. Like my brother, when he told me, he said, I said, I wouldn't even know where to start. He said, start from the beginning. <laughs> and I was like, you know, that's a good place to start, but the beginning is so far away. But yeah, I, I actually want to help people more. I want to let people know that they can do and be whatever they want. You can it, it, it's much more, and, and it's, it's more to life. I, I need everyone to know that, honestly. I, 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 I'm, I'm very passionate about that. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate um, the energy you give, man. Every time I see you, it's just, just like pure energy, pure love. Um, so keep that, because that's hard, especially in this industry. It's, it's hard to keep that. Yeah. Um, the last thing you got to do before you get off the King Kings Network is called Get It Off Your Chest. Mm -hmm. And it's anything that you need to uh, kind of get off and, and let people know before we see you again. Mm. No, not really. I don't tend to hold things on my chest anymore. <laughs> 